touch.
Jesus loves you. Yeah. you probably heard that so many times, especially the, those of us who've been around 20, 30, 40, 40. Jesus loves you. Yeah. And it's not something you could ever, ever get tired of hearing. Jesus loves you. You know, I'm not that experienced with, with relationships and in a general sense, but I know going through school and so sometimes you feel you have this little friend and you think you know what love is. You know, everybody I think is a feeling in which one. But the love of Jesus, listen, when you get to understand what love really is, I know it's a different, it's a different, you know, type of love we're talking about this sense. When you have love, the love of Jesus, this is a complete different And you don't go searching in the world for whatever they want to have of me. We know how we be counterfeit. Listen, once you have the real love of Jesus, you're good to go. Tonight, I want to I wanna encourage us in a short exhortation from the top. Take ownership. Take ownership. And I start with an example and you'll understand where, where I'm going. So you say tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow, you want to see Brother Dimitri down the road and he's sitting with a, a 2014 RAF4. Also, it's a very nice song. Um, very nice week. And he said, Brother Dimitri, that's yours? I would say, of course, it's mine. I would own it. I'm going to claim it. No doubt about that. Okay. The next day, you see me and I'm standing next to a beautiful fiance. And it's a great day in the And your fiance, I think, I suppose, she's mine. Without, without a doubt. I think. Let's say the next day now, you meet me somewhere. And to put it in a way, you're in a compromising position, so to speak. Or you meet me a place where I'm not supposed to be. You meet me caught up in sin. And you come out to me, Brother Dimitri, that's you? I would not say, Brother Dimitri, is that, that you? I would probably tell you, look again. It's not me, and it sounds funny, but what I'm getting at is we will do all almost everything. But when it comes to our shortcomings, we will want to take ownership. And the importance of that tonight is, the cornerstone of the Christianity, the gospel that we believe in, is hinge and confession. And you have to take ownership before you can confess. So confess it. You have to own it, you know. You have to bring it before God. It's yours. Bring it and leave it. So we have to be able to take ownership of it before we go, go on to get our salvation, repentance. That's where it comes from. And, and there's another example I want to give before I go on. I, I, I like to use my mother because I don't know. She always has a lot of sins. But for those of us who grew up, we probably hear this talk already. Sins and busy. I could never understand around the house. My mother would always be using that. If she cooking and, you know, the, the stove, the, the rice or something, get born, sins and busy. Or you're washing your drop of glass, sins and busy. And I know in my mind I used to always sin. I never said it out oh, loud. No. I wasn't that brave. But I, I said it in my mind. Mommy, I already believe it's Satan busy. It's just your fault. Or you just say it and busy, say it and busy, say it and And in the end, you know, I will show you why you are really not supposed to be casting blame and pointing. We're supposed to, as they say, matter. Because blaming somebody else do it raise what you do. Blaming somebody else in the world and say, oh, is the devil? Let me do this. The devil is the devil. You can't when the day comes and Jesus is the devil. That won't stand. So we have to find all in place, Lord, to take ownership. We have to accept our sins and to confess them before God. And the importance of this and why it's so close to me is before, I remember, before I came over to, before I became a Christian. I remember you used to always say to myself that I'm a good person. You know, I'm a good person. I'm not a Christian. But back then, you see, I can't go up you because it ministers to you. you know, it ministers. And you used to always say, oh, I'm a good person, so that means I could go to heaven, right? Wrong. Goodness does not carry us into heaven. I thank God I've come to understand that. Listen, if you know me, if you know me, especially an older person, if I walk this 
known uh, past you 20 times, I have to call out to you 20 times. Whether I'm going to respond. And I only say that to say, I can't tell you hello enough to get into heaven. No. Brethren, I can't do enough good, so to speak, to get myself into heaven. It's only through saving grace of God at the moment I came to understand that. Goodness does not open the door to salvation, nor does it activate the blood that was shed on Calvary. It doesn't. Confession, repentance, a clean heart, accepting that Jesus is God. You could be all the good you want. Unless they come to that to understand that then you're again. You know, and not to say that there are some naturally good people I'm, I'm talking, non-believers, there are some good, when I say good non-believers, you know, yeah. pleasant people. Yeah. But it's sad to say, unless you come to that understanding, then you're lost. Yeah. When, I, I say this, when I went to study in the class, I was paired most of the time with two other guys, a Muslim and a Hindu, a combination, you would say. And I will tell you, a Muslim and one of the group boxes will be three of us. I interacted with them and I'm seeking on a normal job. Pleasant, good people, pleasant as a person. But even so, I know, unless they come to know the true and living God, Christ, and the last, last, last word, all it's on it. All it's on it. And it's something I struggle with, but I thank God that the Holy Spirit brought that revelation to me. That is the genuine love of God and His grace and mercy is what we need. That is how we get salvation. You know? No good, you can't walk your way to salvation. None of us say. None of us say could walk away to salvation. Tonight, the topic that inspired, that inspired this, um, this exhortation is 4 John 1. 8 to 10. First John 1 8 to 10. First John say, and we've heard it many, 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 many times. But you see, this this is what the gospel and this is where it comes. There can be no mistake made. None of us here as a believer in Jesus. Right? You have to take ownership. If you are, you've already taken ownership. You have to take ownership of it. Say, There's no way around it. You can't find no sound or shark or to it. It all starts with taking ownership. Like, that is why I want to encourage us tonight. So I'll read. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we need him out to be alive. And his word is what is not. I don't want us to misunderstand. And tonight I'm not saying that we must go and print out the short now and say, I am a thief, I am a murderer, I am this, I don't want to say. And say that our sins are for the ones who come to Christ, sin is truly for seed, forgetfulness. Yes. But you know what happened? You know what happened when I think of it? God forgets that He doesn't go in next time you come. But well, you know who remembers? People of the world. And there's one keep it like a diary and come through it back at you. Yeah, they, they keep it in a real way. God forgets it, but the world keeps it. Yeah. The world keeps it. And brethren, I'm going to encourage us tonight. You know what? We must let our salvation be louder than our sin. Yeah. Let your salvation be louder than your sin in the sense that if you've been ten times bad when you're with the devil, when you come to God, you're a hundred times well, good. I can't say hundred times. You're a hundred times good for God. Let your salvation scream louder than your sin. When they look at you, every day of them thing, and I need to cast them, so I am a child of God. And they should not be able to face us at all. We must always be on fire. Let our salvation be the one at the forefront. No matter what you want to scream or come, know the God you believe in. The God who saved you. Listen, that comes from the inside you, and that's what God is saying. The peace of God is happening. Listen, listen. They could come and they would always come. Yes. But once you know the God, you know, sit down and go feet to high, high and wrong. You have to know the God who stand and trust Him. And I ask you, when we come, there's a story that says, No man lights a candle and puts it on a bush, but he puts it on a candlestick so that it gives light to the rest of your house. So it's the same of our salvation. 
You can come and after you've been a big, big bad sinner, come and be a little Christian. A big bad sinner, was a little Christian. No, you have to be an even bigger Christian. I can have to let your light shine all day so that the people that follow you are going to say, Wow! It must be a sin. You shouldn't even have to engage in any conversation with them. When they come past their soul, they should look at you and say, Boy, now. Very good here. So, keep that burden. That is why I'm saying, I said, Take worship. Keep that. And keep your testimony. Keep it. By the blood of the Lamb, the testimony they overcame. And you won't imagine the impact your testimony has you. Because when you stand and you share, I've been in court so many times. You listen, when you stand and you share, especially the young ones, I know they feel like when you listen, you know you raise it in and you take the encouragement. Listen, your testimony shot. Listen, it's a powerful thing. You know the really hearts you touch when we stand and share, especially for the young people. So keep your testimony, keep it, and always let the salvation of your work in Christ shine bright. Something that I have here that I, I, I really can't understand, so I wrote it down. You ever hear a Christian or believer walk around with the deep conversation? They did some type of around this. I can't forgive myself, you know. I, I, can't, I really can't forgive myself. No, it's with me, I can't understand that, but I just read it away. But the Almighty God says that He's faithful and just to forgive you of all the sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. But you, with your little self, you can't forgive yourself. God is willing and ready and able to forgive you. Amen. But you walking around holding on to this, not ready to let it go. Why? Why? Is it that you have a higher standard than God? Are you more righteous than God? And God is saying, but I will forgive you. Confess your sin. There's blood. The blood is in the blood. In fine, the day will run out, you know. The blood that flew from Calvary's day, and you don't want to come. Why? I, I, the only how I say this is what we feel. We were more righteous than God. I don't know. One songwriter puts it this way, and every time I hear it, I feel so blessed. The vilest offender. Who truly believes yes, that woman from Jesus? Pardon? Yes, I may be a little bit sick of it. I tell you, when I hear that, you know, I get so encouraged. I just say to myself, well, I didn't have a fire to spend I might just take a two dollars, a little whatever, whatever. When I say it makes sense, I'm going to be careful. The thing you hold as a little sin could keep you out of heaven. Eh? The thing you might have in your mind is saying to see you, it's a little, it's a people don't watch people, listen, bro. Don't watch people. The little confess, little big, small, medium, whatever you want to do. Confess it, bring really it before God. So, I know I, they say what they say and big sin, I can never. The, the, the thing I want to really, really get at it. We all know when sin comes. I, I remember again, and I just thank God for teaching me words. I remember I used to always say before, before I gave my life. What is conviction? I will come and sit down with this thing. I will hear the preacher always, ever so often mention the whole conviction of the Holy Spirit. And I will sit down and I will say, What is this conviction? How would I know when I am convicted? Hmm? Who tell me say that? <laughs> Listen, you, you would not imagine. Boy, that you would not imagine. I, I don't want to put it, I can't read my but there's a feeling, there's a most like, you take a towel, you soak it in hot water, you wrap it from your heart, and you get some meal and you start. <laughs> yeah, it's just trouble. Yes. Brethren, I, know, I am not a mind reader, right? I can't read mind, but I know you know what I'm talking about. Yes. When the spirit talks at you, they say it doesn't leave and that you're holding so many a million that the Holy Spirit doesn't leave you know. You're holding and you know when the Holy Spirit is pulling, is pulling at your heart. And I don't want you to misunderstand, it's a good thing. It's a very good thing when your heart is sent to the word of God. You know? It's a very, very good thing. In, 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 a, in Hebrews it says, for the word of God is good. And powerful, and sharper than into a jet soul, piercing even to the dividing of soul of soul and spirit, of bone and marrow. Marrow is the next time you go, right? Yes. And it's a bizarre of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So, when the word of God touches your heart like that, that's not what you're supposed to worry. Yes. 
You know what you're supposed to worry? When it's stop feeling that thing and describe what you have to and all of that. Anytime you find yourself in a position where the word of God does not have that effect on you anymore. Um, when you say this is a marathon you run, right? And a marathon you go straight, but I'm telling you something, so I run. Anytime you find yourself with the word of God, lose this effect on your heart, run. Go walk, go jump, run back to God. This is a sprint between a marathon. Because you see, if you do it, take your time and go and I will be with the next week, man. It's okay. One time, maybe two time, three time. They get comfortable. And sin becomes common, please. And when sin becomes common, please, it's almost like you get a sickness, a spiritual sickness. You know, if you eat too much sweet, you get sugar. If you eat too much salt, you get um, hypertension, um, pressure. Well, if you go too much and you sin and you eat confessing it, your heart starts to get hard. Yes. The word of God loses it. Yes. You have so much pile of sin that you need to confess it. And you just feel it and your heart starts to get hard. And then you trouble some place. Yes. 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 You, you know how water is a idiom something. How water flows all about the dog. Huh? Mm-hmm. Anytime you see something coming in life when you start to just come and it's in trouble. Yes. Here we know it again. If you have them. Edward, that she push out whatever. You yeah, must get water. I, as a child, I used to play with it. Just pour water in and then watch it run out. Anytime you find yourself in a position, you need to run. And if you say, oh, my hip is too good, and this and that, virtually this is the spirit. I know you could run, and you could run fast in the spirit and so on. Run back to God. You need to go there. I, I haven't been around long. When I say I haven't been around long, I mean, I just been young, right? Uh, young men. Older than most young people are still really old. For some reason, they thought I was um, 40 something. I remember. Exactly. I remember when the young, young, young people they came up and said, Good brother, you know, 40 something. I didn't even know how to feel. I didn't even know how to feel because I was like, Why are you 30? Are you 25? I was sorry. But I am not, you know, I'm old, but all I'm saying, not to say, there's two things that I'm sorting of since I've been in this grade, so to speak. One of them is the hard enough you don't want to be in. And the other one is double mindedness. Yes. I'll come to that just story when I finish with the, the hard enough. You see, anytime the Holy Spirit no longer touches you, you're able to sit down in church. And only you would know, eh? Only you would know. No matter the person next to you, watch how they think they know about you, only you would know when the Holy Spirit talks at you. So I talk it to you. Anytime you see me able to sit in a seat and you know your spirit is being tall and you don't move, you don't react, you don't give in, that is the one inside. Run. That's what you start But If you want to, you give a gunshot and you, this is the one. But anytime you reach and you realize, oh, run. Because if you keep yourself in a body, it will get messy. And you want to what comes before that too? When you could sit down in church, or you could anything, anything that relates to the word of God, even if it's a, sit, a song, a testimony, whatever it is, and you're not engaged. You're not paying attention, your attention is elsewhere. There's a warning sign to you. Yeah. I could have been in school and uh, plenty of years. I don't want to come home now. But I've been in school a lot. And there's one thing I'm sorting, there's one occasion I recall. I call myself. Not understanding what's going on anymore. Once, listen. If you talk to me, I always, I am always attentive. I always pay attention, and I do what happened at one time. And that feeling for the life of me, when I look wrong from what I was doing, and the teacher and I, I can't follow. Listen, I felt like, oh, this is what it really feel like. And I want to tell you something tonight. While in school, I ran the risk of losing an education. It's over here in church, you play with your salvation. Yeah. Yeah. And education is important, but you see your salvation. Yeah. <laughs> there's no there's no comparison there. There's none. So you have to be mindful. And something else, don't stand blaming, don't really blame me. Don't say, oh, is it possible to sit down next to me, distract me, or is it this or that? The answer ain't going to stand. You have to take ownership. Listen, realize it's your shortcoming. 
and if you ever move from it, you also move if you have do whatever you have to do. But at the end of the day, it's you, it's your decision. But your remindedness is another sickness. I don't know how else to call it. It's a sickness in the spirit. I really don't know how else to term it. There's a young uh, contemporary gospel artist um, called Jonathan McReynolds. Some of you may not know about the younger folks, maybe you know. Jonathan McReynolds. And he, he saw a song called No Shades of Grey. No Shades of Grey. And we normally say that um, things are not black and white. The world is black and white. There are certain things that you can't just say yes or no. And to give an example, you wouldn't believe that um, if you go and they, they, when they teach sometimes, there's a field called ethics. This is the best place to explain it. You wouldn't imagine that they would teach their schools of thoughts that would say it's okay to say kill a million people. Take, for example, this coronavirus that just came out. Their schools of thoughts that would tell you Okay, if a million people infected and they in one place, boy, get rid of and save the rest of the world. That's just to give an example of the black and white that I'm, I'm talking about, right? And why do you say, okay, yes, you can sit again, you know, what's the foolishness you're talking? Then I'm not going to wait, but I'm just giving an example of the situation. Why do I see war? You see, with Christianity, you see, with this gospel, it's a hard and foolishness to know. It is black and white. It's either you're for God or you're not for God. Either you're with the doctrine or you're not with the doctrine. Either you're saved or you're not saved. Either you're saved. There's no question. Anytime the great era comes into church is when man starts mixing the color like a painter. There's any black and the white and you mix it in for your own comfort. You mix it and how to the word of God to please yourself. Anytime you're blessed, I, I heard a um, preacher say a couple of months ago, and I know Swami is when I hold it. It's so simple. Anytime you read the word of God, what do you do? You know, you find that the Holy Spirit is you reading, you read, the Holy Spirit is revealing to you as you read. And you come across a portion of scripture that you, you individual, you would not be with or you don't believe in. What do you do? What, what do you do? That if it has a change in what you believe, simple and easy as that. Because the word of God is not to be compromised, and we know all about one of our doctrines and all. That's why you have so many different areas that they pop it up. Because man wants to have this, we want to take that up. It's not that. I'm telling you tonight, it is black and white with the word of God. There's no mixing, there's no grave, and the Holy Spirit doesn't leave you in doubt. And I say it again, the word is a million times. That's how you know. You, the Holy Spirit won't leave you in doubt. Know. Anytime you find yourself starting to. Oh, I want to this game or so on, so on. Stop. 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 Just don't allow. That's how it's time. Next thing you're giving one, two. Next thing you rewrite the whole Bible and change up all the scriptures to please yourself. That is not the way you Stick to what you want. Anytime you find yourself in a place where you know what to do, run. Run. Like, don't want. You know, don't jump. Don't take, run. Spread back. Spread back to God. Another thing I have, don't look at what is people's life and take God for granted. God is with every one of us differently. And that's another thing I've come to understand. Everything happens in God's own timing. And it's real funny because if you if you be real, you could watch and you could see different people. You might see one person who was in Christ, they backstage three, four, five times, and they still have the opportunity to come back to Christ. One of the person seven, eight, nine, ten times. Don't look at that, you know. There's something called the sovereign will of God. That is not you to be told, you know. You could wash the post and say, well, they get ten times, and maybe have ten. No. You could step up the one. That's right. That's it for you. And you might say, Brothers, I know something. Or you to decide what seems fair and all of that. The sovereign will of God will be supreme. You want to get God and we can't even start to understand. God, I we know that I don't know what, what was last week I believe the preacher was saying and I also listen that movies. You don't need to understand God, you know. Sometimes we, we sit down and we try to understand and plan out this and let me tell you something, if you try and understand God before you move, you never move. You never move now. You, know? you won't believe when I tell you some more weird today. You are using in science they will tell you you're not using the full percentage of your brain and your max, so it's only 8, 10, so I don't believe so. And you want to try and understand that? It's omniscient, you are knowing God. Don't even, don't even think about understanding God. 
for even in their own understanding. The Bible says that God will use the foolish things of this world to confirm the wisest. Those are also the wisest of men. You know? The most them. If you listen, it's only sometimes afterwards, sometimes afterwards, when God finished with you, you might be able to say, Oh, yes. now I understand. Oh, now I get why it's so and so happened all the years ago. Yes. Sometimes, would you? You could be able to understand for yourself, much less to be God and understand for everybody. No, right, no. So don't they play this song? Is that we say trust and obey? For the rest of the world. Now I understand and obey. If we think about the Bible and all these stories, and we talk about the Bible, every single one of them is an example. If Abraham was still trying to understand God before he went to Israel, he would have still lived on. If Moses was to understand why he had a raise of his right to part a seat, they would not get consumed by the enemy yeah. army. If Joshua was to come and play, boy, he may not have to walk around it, he would have still been walking up to today. Yeah. Yeah. Can't be to listen, even watch David. You, oh, a little, little boy, you have an army full of men who are ready for battle. You have a boy which you would you have thought to send that little boy to fight the mightiest enemy? No, no, you can't understand, you just trust. And one that's all you need. Trust and know me, not understand. I want to trust in God. Everything works so fine, you know. Everything works so fine. Get the problem comes from me when you want to be big and bright and see if you want to understand and how it's working all things. Um, something else. You know what's interesting to me? I bought it um, recently at work. That there's this saying, I can just go. I can just go. And scar for forgiveness. It's something that I'm you know, hearing from the, the unsaved and those who don't really know and have a relationship with God. Because I don't believe you could have a relationship with God. Love God and say, I didn't deliver with this sin. I mean, that just goes some right to me. That goes some right to me. And I remember somebody said that to me. And in my mind, I was like, really? A while ago, I just read out the scripture that says he's faithful and just to forgive you. Which is true. But I'm like, you have to come with that honest heart. The Bible said, do not be fooled. God is not marked whatsoever a man so. So, to even think that you could just in yourself again feel so bright and out smart that because the blood is there, I will quote unquote abuse people. Are you crazy? Hey! Are you crazy? Rush, I remember there's a I I I don't quite remember there's a portion of scripture that speaks something about sacrificing Christ and you. Sacrificing Christ, you have to be so careful and rush. Listen, this is not a joke, you see. If you don't come with an honest heart before God, God knows the heart, you know? God, listen, God knows the heart. You watch it, God knows the heart. So if you did you could take a whole three, five, ten days and say you can't visit. If the heart is not tuned yeah. and right, then it's just words. Yeah. Yeah. So we can get into this, this, this fancy that, oh, we can just come and no, your heart has to be right with God. There's no such thing as delivery, sin, and then God will not be marked. And that's very important for us to understand. And finally, as I begin, uh, as I started, we must go on to our marriage or a sharp by the teachers that we must walk out of our own salvation yeah. and treat them with. And all that comes from a personal relationship with God. You want to talk about a personal relationship? There's no element more personal than the salvation that you have. That's right. Nothing is more personal than the salvation that you have. I thank God tonight that I, when I thought of it, I, it comes to me this way that salvation is in fine and you like a world that you want to serve. Oil? That oil, the oil itself is where you have a finite resource. Someday, based on whatever, it will run out. All the oil, that's why you're looking into renewable energy. The oil will run away to the salvation. It's the right to say because you knew you don't get salvation, we can't get away. Imagine if when young brothers like me come to salvation, I was the right, the last two salvation of the looking for God's name. Can you imagine how terrifying that would have been? Salvation is here freely given to all of us. It is there. So understand, we have to be. Don't play with it. Do not play with it. 
And I thank God that because you don't get any, I can't get out because you get so only a little bit don't walk. So the same sovereign is dead you only need to be believed and trust in you. And it starts back with the same confession. You can't get wrong. And just like how you call the salvation, you have to maintain it to you. Yes, yes. You have to maintain it to you. Yes. you know, just like how you give you an example, you get thing in your, in your body, you feel you take care, just like you can take care of your body. You eat bad, you exercise, whatever. Well. You think that's important? You think maintaining your body is fresh, important. The salvation is even so. They said, take care of the spirit. I say, you let your body and go, be a young thing. So, but I'm saying, the same, or even more, you give more attention to the spirit because that is what goes into eternity. That is what really, really, really matters. Yes, hallelujah. I don't know how I listen. That, to me, if I want to choose between the two, it seems that it's the most, are the more important. And in closing, let me begin and I'll start you know, saying, you know, we must be doing pain in the game and so forth. And I just want to show you why. We all the Bible begins, so to speak, from one of the oldest pieces of story, false Bible story we have in that way. In the E in, in the garden. Think about it. When God said to Adam and you don't eat from this tree and then you put in the game. You know, he saw up and came. Whoever fancy words that I use and influence in mind together. I'll probably do all it this morning too, you know, if you pay attention, pass the touch on it this morning. Yeah. I smile when I walk up. Did someone come? And he played with your mind. And she gave in, she eat, she take, she gave Adam. But you know, the interesting part of one together, when God came and he started to talk to them. When he came and he called Adam and they were hiding and so forth. Everybody start to blame somebody else. Yeah. If yeah. this is someone, this someone began, he put all that thing in me. I don't know. Maybe the woman is the woman, maybe the woman is the woman. Blame him. Yeah. And why we should take ownership now? Let me ask you. What was the ending of that story? When Eve said, Was this someone? Did she get away? Yeah. When I don't say it's easy, why is the woman there again? Did she, did she get away? No. Judgment came. And so for all of us today, no matter who we want to blame and point fingers, when that time comes and we have to answer, we can't call any other name but ourselves. It's between us and God. Thank Praise the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.